This is Lecture 56 in the FOA Lecture Series on Fiber Optics. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the bend radius of fiber optic cable and why it's important. We're mostly going to talk about pulling underground cable, but we're also going to talk about aerial cable and premises cable later in the presentation. Pulling underground cable should be done under controlled conditions. The cable should be properly attached to a pull tape with a breakaway swivel pulling eye. The duct should be lubricated when necessary, when friction creates too much tension. You should pull with control tension, which can be done by the capstan itself that you pull the cable with. And what we want to talk about now is maintaining a minimum bend radius for the cable to prevent damage to the cable and the fibers inside it. We're going to use two terms here which we feel we should define. The diameter and the radius of a circle. The diameter is the total width of the circle measured across the center. That's what you measure, for example, when you measure the outside diameter of a fiber optic cable. On a circle, the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to any point in the circle's circumference, or outer rim, and that's half of the diameter. The circumference of the circle, which we're not going to spend much time on here, is the diameter of the circle multiplied by pi, that infamous constant that we had to learn in mathematics, but use all the time in the real world when calculating dimensions. While all fiber optic cables are flexible, there is a maximum amount that can be bent before you can do damage to the cable structure or cause higher attenuation in the fibers or even break fibers. That specification is generally called the minimum bending radius. The typical bend radius, which we call R in this diagram, is specified as 20 times the cable diameter which is little d you see on the diagram, when it, the cable is under tension and 10 times the cable diameter after pulling. For example, when you store slack for, in a handhold or uh, in service loops. Not all cables have that same 20 times spec. Some of them are 15 times and some are more, which means you should check the manufacturer's specs for the cable that you're working with. While most people refer to bend radius, some people also refer to bend diameter. Bend radius is the most common term, but some manufacturers have start using diameter, and it's all to try to prevent confusion. But an easier way to not get confused is think of it this way. That bend radius applies to bending for example, around corners. And diameter is easier to think of if you're running the cable over a, a pulley or a capstan or are rolling the cable up for storage loops. So radius applies to bending around corners. Diameter refers to storage loops, pulleys, and capstans. Using the guideline that the minimum bend radius under tension is 20 times the um, diameter of the cable, obviously small cables have smaller bend diameters or bend radiuses. Some cables are even so flexible they don't follow the 20 times rule, but they are rated for 10 or 15 times. But a small cable like this one, about 5 millimeters in diameter, has a bend radius of about 100 millimeters or 4 inches under tension, and half that when stored. High fiber count cables, which are becoming more common in the market now, like the 1728 fiber cable, have large physical diameters of the cable. This one's about 25 millimeters or 1 inch, and they are very stiff. 20 times the bend radius means it has a bend radius of 20 inches. Bend diameter, for example, for a capstan, would be on the order of a meter, or 40 inches. 
Even for storage, like in this manhole, the bend radius is 10 inches and the bend diameter 20 inches. So a cable this big requires a very large manhole. Here's a quick test you can do for yourself to see how big the bend radius is of a cable you're working with. Measure the diameter of the cable and mark the cable with tape for a length 32 times the diameter of the cable. For example, a 12 millimeter or half inch cable would be marked at a 400 millimeter or 16 inch length. Grasp the cable with both hands past the remarks and bend it 90 degrees, right angle. There's lots of things that are right angles like blocks on sidewalks or doorways or the like so you can gauge what 90 degrees looks like and observe the size of the bend radius of that cable. If you have a cable with a 15 times bend radius, C, the length you mark on the cable, should be 24 times the diameter. Here is a good illustration of why bend radius is important. This crew is pulling a fiber optic cable through conduit along a city block. The cable comes out of the conduit, straight up out of the manhole, over a pulley, and is pulled by a camp stand on the rear of the truck. Is that the right way to do things? This crew is making several major errors in pulling this cable. First of all, they're pulling the cable almost straight up out of the manhole. So where it comes over the edge of the conduit, it's being bent too tightly along that edge. Then they're running it across a pulley to direct it back to the cap stand on the truck. That pulley is only about 12 centimeters, about five inches in diameter. That's a pulley for rope or steel cable not fiber optic cable. That pulley should be as large as the capstan that they're pulling the cable with. Both of those can be major causes of damage to a fiber optic cable. When you're pulling underground cable, the areas of concern are the entrance and exit to the underground conduit, where the cable can be bent too tightly, and likewise the entrance and exit from the manhole where the cable can be bent when under, when under tension. You also have to be concerned by the size of the cap stand you're using to pull the cable. That has to be large enough to meet the bend radius or bend diameter requirements itself. You need to use bend radius limiters within the manhole itself to get from the conduit to the outside world. And there's a number of different types of devices that can do that, which we'll discuss in later videos in this series. You also need to worry about capstan diameter. The capstan should be about 40 times the diameter of the, of the cable itself. So a half inch cable needs at least a 20 inch capstan. Some of the new high fiber count cables need cap stands as large as 32 or 40 inches. After you pull the cable and splice it, you're going to need to store service loops and splice closures within manholes or handholes. And you need to plan ahead. Those manholes or handholes need to be large enough for the cables to be stored safely. And if you're not the first person in there, you need to worry about being neat because at some point or another, somebody whose cable you bury in the bottom of that manhole or handhole may try to get to it to do some work on their cable. And that's going to make fun for everybody on top. For aerial cable, whether you're installing lashed cable to a messenger or ADSS cable, or even figure eight cable, the concerns are very much the same for for um, bin radius. You have pulleys that are often used to bring the cable up from the ground to the telecom space to the messenger where the cable is being installed. Once you install it, you have storage loops to worry about and you have transition to underground. And those are all points where one has to be concerned about 
the bend radius of the cable. Here's a couple of examples of what can happen in an aerial installation. The large photo on the right shows a kink in the cable that was done while the cable was being transitioned from underground to the pole. Inset in that photograph is a pulley being used to bring a cable up from the ground and being pulled down the messenger, and that pulley is too small. On the right, you can see examples of storage. At the top, it's a very neatly made loop of probably about the right diameter, and below that, you can see two storage loops with snowshoes. One of those sho snowshoes was improperly attached to the messenger, and it's drooping down, causing a bend radius violation in the cable. Many of the bend radius violations you see in premises cabling are patch cords on patch panels and racks that are hanging in all sorts of direction. Because a lot of the cabling in a premises cable is hidden above ceilings or above equipment, it's hard to see. Here's a couple examples, though, of how to use cable trays and inner duct indoors to protect cable. A lot of users use inner duct on their premises cabling applications because there's a lot of people in a building working above the ceiling and around in the walls and protecting fiber optic cable is easier if it's inside a duct that's bright orange and obvious to anybody who's working near it. This video was intended primarily to introduce you to the concept of bend radius or bend diameter and where it can cause problems in fiber optic installation. We intend to do more videos in the future that address those specific areas that we mentioned. So watch for those on the FOA's YouTube channel. We're the FOA, the Fiber Optic Association, the International Professional Society of Fiber Optics, and the recognized certification body for fiber optics worldwide. Find us online at foa.org, where you'll find the FOA online guide with almost a thousand pages of free technical information, and on fiberu.org, where we offer free online self-study programs for everybody.